Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick or The Notorious Fantasy and in today's video, we're we'll talking about five players that could go nuclear in 2024 fantasy football. Five players that could be smashes at ADP and have those huge seasons that make your league mates feel foolish that they didn't end up drafting them. But before we could get into the five players that could go nuclear in 2024 fantasy football, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you're doing up enjoying today's video, that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter or X, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. So without further ado, let's get in to the video. We begin with the first player that could go nuclear in 2024 fantasy football, and that is Kyron Williams, running back of the Los Angeles Rams. Current aggregate ADP from Sleeper, ESPN, MFL, NFFC, and Fantrax have him as the running back 7 at pick 16. Underdog fantasy ADP running back 8 at pick 28. Point one, Kyron Williams is going to be one of the most, if not the most polarizing players entering into the 2024 fantasy football season. And that is because there is a lot of confusion regarding his injury. Now, we are not yet into late August, early September, when you guys are doing your actual fantasy football drafts. And I think by then, we will have a lot more information and it will be a little bit easier to make your mind up on Kyron Williams. Right now, as pick number 16, it does feel a little bit high to me. But if you are someone that is seeking insane upside, then Kyron Williams might be the player for you in the middle of the second round. Kyron Williams last year, played in 12 games with 11 starts, so only 12 games played, and he was the running back 7 in PPR, and he was the running back 2 in PPR points per game. He had 228 carries, which is 19 per game. 19 carries per game, 13th at running back. 1,114 rushing yards, 3rd at running back, 95.3 per game. 48 targets, 4 per game, 24th. 32 receptions, 2.7 per game, 28th. 206 receiving yards, 17.2 per game, 32nd, and 15 total touchdowns, third. He scored over a touchdown per game. And in terms of efficiency, he was incredibly efficient. Eighth in true yards per carry, 13th in yards per touch, ninth in yards created, and second in dominator rating across the running back position. Now, the biggest problem, the glaring issue with Kyron Williams is the injury. Now, the most recent report on Kyron Williams from Sean McVay on July 25th, which is just a couple of days ago, knowing what an instrumental part he is going to be in this offense, you want to be smart about that. And so that's where we are at. We want to be mindful of it. But in the meantime, he's going to go. He's going to lead the way for the running back room. They draft Blake Corum in the 2024 NFL Draft, and anyone that watched Blake Corum play at Michigan knows that Blake Corum is a very competent running back. Anyone that watched him play knows that Blake Corum could be taking away snaps from Kyron Williams, and more than likely will. Kyron Williams was playing an insane amount of snaps last season because the other running backs behind Kyron Williams really just weren't all that good, and Blake Corum is definitely much better than that group. But at the same time, while I do believe that Blake Corum is going to play a much bigger factor and he's going to be able to cut a piece of the pie out of the typical snap share of Kyron Williams from last season, Kyron Williams last year when he played fewer than 80% of the snaps on the Rams. This is a tweet from Nick Ercolano of BDGE. Shout out to Nick. Week four, 25 carries for 103 yards and two touchdowns on the ground, three receptions for 24 yards. Week 12, another game with fewer than 80% of the snaps on the Rams. 16 carries, 143 yards, six receptions, 61 receiving yards, and two touchdowns. Week 15, 
27 carries for 152 yards and a touchdown with five receptions for three yards. And then week 16, 22 carries for 104 yards and a touchdown. Kyron Williams is going to be very efficient even if they cut down his carries, even if they cut down his receptions as well, the target share in the offense. The biggest worry in terms of Blake Corm entering into this offense is potentially vulturing away some touchdowns, but a mass majority of running backs that you're going to draft in fantasy football are going to potentially get vultured. Some of those guys will get vultured by some random fucking running back you've never heard of. Some of the guys will get vultured by the starting quarterback on the goal line. Shout out to DeAndre Swift last season, right? So, Iron Williams is in a very good spot to succeed. We know that the Rams offense last year with a banged up version of Cooper Cup was still laying the pipe for that ass like they were a plumber to defenses every single week. I understand that Kyron Williams is going to see less work in this offense, but he will make up for it with efficiency. Again, 8th in true yards per carry, 13th in yards per touch, ninth in yards created, and 2nd in dominator rating. So sure, is the addition of Blake Corum great for Kyron's fantasy football value? Of course not, but in turn, getting less usage could also lead to less wear and tear like you're playing college football 25, and it could lead to Kyron Williams not getting as much banged up. Now, Kyron's a guy that throughout his NFL career has been someone that you can dub as injury prone. Once we get to late August, early September, when you're doing your fantasy football draft, your at-home league, your league with Jim and Pam from the fucking office, Michael Scott, right? By then, we will have a lot clearer of a situation or a lot clearer of an idea on this situation. But as of right now, I have came to the conclusion that I am going to take that swing on the upside of Kyron Williams. Could it be a swing and a miss? The ball's already in the catcher's mitt and it's a strike three. You're out, and Kyron Williams ends up being a complete and utter bust of large magnitude, a bukake of sorts, of course. But the upside is incredibly high, and I think because a lot of people are nervous about Kyron Williams, you might be able to get him in the late second or even in the third round in some leagues. At number two, we got Dalton Kincaid, tight end of the Buffalo Bills. Aggregate ADP tight end five at pick 48. Underdog Fantasy ADP tight end 5 at pick 51.2. Dalton Kincaid was the tight end 11 last season in PPR and the tight end 13 in PPR points per game. He had 16 games played with 11 starts, 91 targets, 5.7 per game, ranking 8th, 73 receptions, 4.6 per game, number 7, 673 receiving yards, 42.1 per game, number 10, and 2 total touchdowns, 27th. The thing... That was really holding Dalton Kincaid down. It was like they strapped some fucking concrete to each of his feet, right? He was being drugged down by the touchdowns. A guy that is built like Dalton Kincaid should not be scoring two fucking touchdowns in 16 games. I'm not saying that Dalton Kincaid is going to lead the tight end position in touchdowns, but I do definitely think that that is a possibility. The Buffalo Bills lose Stefan Diggs to the Houston Texans. Sure, they bring in Curtis Samuel, they draft Keon Coleman, but none of those guys are the red zone threat that Dalton Kincaid is. So I think the exit of Stefan Diggs is going to be huge for the value of Dalton Kincaid. I think there is a shot, now am I saying that you should bet your house, bet your mortgage, fucking take out a loan to to wager that Dalton Kincaid will lead the team in terms of targets, I would tell you not to do that. But do I think that that is a possibility? Yes, I do really believe so. I think Curtis Samuel, Khalil Shakira, Shakira, oh baby, want to talk like that? Keon Coleman, whoever you want to draft in fantasy at the wide receiver position for Buffalo, 
They all make sense based on where they're going. You can have an argument for each of them. But I think there is a scenario, right? Doctor Strange does the thing where you can see all of the scenarios, right? At least that's what I think. I've not seen all the Marvel movies. I get all my Marvel references from fucking Fortnite. So I think that there are multiple scenarios where Dalton Kincaid ends the season leading the team in targets. Josh Allen and him have that peanut butter and jelly connection. 5G LTE connection. Kincaid ranked first in target accuracy, eighth in true catch rate. This is a guy that has the pedigree, the skill set, the build to be the tight end number one in fantasy football. He does. And his quarterback, Josh Allen, is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And the team just lost their number one target in Stefan Diggs. It doesn't take Albert Einstein. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that Dalton Kincaid has that nuclear 25 kill streak, Modern Warfare 2 upside this season to help you win your league and finish as the number one tight end. And even if he's not the number one tight end, there's a very easy path where he could be a top three tight end, very much paying off at ADP. At number three, we got Amari Cooper, wide receiver of the Cleveland Browns. Aggregate ADP wide receiver 29 at pick 57. Underdog fantasy ADP wide receiver 28 at pick 40.2. Wide receiver 29 off the board, but he was the wide receiver 20 in PPR last season and the wide receiver 18 in PPR points per game. Amari Cooper has been a guy that throughout his career, regardless of the team that he was on, whether it was the Raiders to begin his career, the Dallas Cowboys, or the Cleveland Browns, has been a guy that a lot of people are taking that nap on. They were sleeping on, and people are sleeping on Amari Cooper yet again. Amari Cooper is going to be a guy with very big upside because I believe that Amari Cooper is definitely a top 24 wide receiver in the NFL. He's on a team whose lead running back, 9-inch Nicholas Chubb, suffered an insane injury last season where his leg turned into a right angle and is not projected to be ready for the start of the season. I understand that I love Jerome Ford F-150, but this could lead to the team being more pass heavy. I understand that Amari Cooper really had those Boom! Shout out the Costco guys and the Rizzler, right? Those huge games with cool Joe Flacco under center. But, and this is a big but, shout out to Kelsey Monroe. I think that people aren't truly understanding that Watson wasn't really as bad as you probably believe he was last season. Was Deshaun Watson the old Deshaun Watson who was in Houston getting rubbed down before the games, throwing a million touchdowns, looking like one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL? No, he wasn't that last season. But I think now, in 2024, he probably has the clearest mind he's had. And I think that he is going to be better this season. Last year, Mari Cooper had two 100-plus yard games with Deshaun Watson under center. 12 games with Watson in Cooper's career as a Cleveland Brown. He had 51 catches for 870 yards and four touchdowns on a 17-game pace. That is 72 catches for 1,232 yards and five touchdowns. And it is important to understand that that statistic includes multiple games in 2022 where Watson was seeing ghosts Sam Darnold style and was not effective at all. So again, say what you want about Deshaun Watson, but I think that Deshaun Watson is good enough for Amari Cooper to succeed. Cooper had 128 targets last year, 8.5 per game, ranking 20th at wide receiver, 72 receptions, 4.8 per game, ranking 26th, 1,250 receiving yards, 83.3 per game, ranking 10th, and five total touchdowns, 29th. Again, very comparable stats to the per game pace with Deshaun Watson. So even if Watson doesn't excel, even if Watson doesn't play any better than he played in that 12-game stretch, Cooper will still pay off at ADP, but Cooper has the upside to Hulk smash through that ADP if Watson is able to play a little bit better. 
In terms of efficiency, last year he ranked 90th in target accuracy, though he was 12th in yards per target, 3rd in yards per reception, 13th yards per team pass attempt, and 18th in dominator rating. The fact that the target accuracy was so bad tells you that even if Deshaun Watson isn't his old self, Amari Cooper will still be successful for fantasy football. And the Browns just gave Amari Cooper a $5 million raise, while the team is also guaranteeing him the $20 million currently left on his contract. Cooper is still technically entering the final year of his deal, but that could get resolved during the season. It also means that $80 million of the $100 million of his contract will have been guaranteed. Amari Cooper, again, one of the most underrated wide receivers in the National Football League. I understand that the Cleveland Browns bought in Jerry Judy, but Jerry Judy ultimately hasn't been worth much at the NFL level. I still think he has the pedigree. He still has the talent, but very clear that he is not going to overtake Amari Cooper as the wide receiver one. He couldn't even overtake Portland Sutton. At number four, we got the short king himself, Tyrion Lannister's main man, Kyler Murray, quarterback of the Arizona Cardinals, aggregate ADP quarterback nine at pick 83, underdog fantasy ADP quarterback seven, pick 77.9. Quarterback nine in aggregate ADP. Tyler Murray is a clear example of people just not knowing ball. You don't think Kyler Murray is one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL? You don't know ball, and if you especially don't think that he's a great pick in fantasy football, whether he comes off the board as the quarterback 7, 8, 9, or 10, you don't understand fantasy football because of how much the rushing upside is going to benefit Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray played only eight games last season because he missed the first half of the season due to his ACL recovery. He also tore his meniscus in 2022. 268 passing attempts, 33.5 per game, 176 completions, 22 per game, 65.7% completion percentage. 1,799 passing yards, 224.9 per game, 10 passing touchdowns at a 3.7% rate. Tyler Murray is a good enough quarterback to throw at a 5 plus percent passing touchdown rate. So I feel like the passing touchdowns are going to be at a much better rate this season compared to last season, five interceptions. But this is the kicker. This is what's important for Kyler Murray. 44 carries, 16th. Again, only eight games, the 16th most carries a quarterback. 244 rushing yards, 13th at quarterback, and three rushing touchdowns, 12th. And in terms of efficiency, he ranked 10th in fantasy points per drop back. I get, if you watch the games last year, Kyler comes back and... Maybe that's what is hindering people from liking him, right? Because Kyler didn't look necessarily fantastic last season, but that's because he came off of a torn ACL and a torn meniscus. People need to not overreact to last season. His stats were fine. Was he one of the best quarterbacks? No, but I think he will be one of the best quarterbacks in 2024. Again, rushing upside is vital in fantasy football. Unless you're Pat Mahomes going out there, dropping your nuts in the eye socket of the defense, throwing for a million passing yards, a million touchdowns, you really need that rushing upside to be successful. The biggest kicker, the biggest boom here for Kyler comparing him last season to this season is this guy named Marvin Harrison Jr. Now, I've already given Marvin Harrison Jr. the Gawk Gawk 9000 special, the Hawk to a special, but I think that Marvin Harrison is deserving of that. Marvin Harrison is going to be a humongous part of this Cardinals offense and adds a safety valve for Kyler Murray. Ray McBride, now being the solidified starter this season, is going to help out Kyler Murray as well, having a solid, one of the better starting tight ends in the NFL. And now he has a wide receiver that I think has the pedigree to be the best wide receiver in the National Football League. I get outside of that, 
They've got Michael Wilson. They have some other players that aren't necessarily the best, but I've heard some very positive things out of camp for Michael Wilson, so maybe he'll be a sneaky late-round pick, but it feels like ever since he's been in the NFL, he's been a sneaky late-round pick. But Kyler Murray, short king, I really do believe is going to be able to finish inside of the top five, and I think because of his rushing upside, because of the fact that they have Marvin Harrison, they have some pretty decent weapons, Kyler Murray has a chance to be the quarterback one. Is it the most likely thing to happen? Of course not. But the upside is certainly there. At number five, we move to Christian Watson, wide receiver of the Green Bay Packers. Aggregate ADP wide receiver 47 at pick 101. Underdog fantasy ADP wide receiver 41 at pick 68.9.1 picks off of being at pick 69. Very nice. I like my name of Borat. So Underdog Fantasy, they are the sponsor of today's video. We've talked about them a couple of times. Underdog Fantasy is the best place to play best ball fantasy football this summer. If you don't know what best ball is, it's the best part about fantasy football. It's the draft, and that's it. There's no waivers, no trades, no in-season management. Underdog Fantasy has tournaments with as low as buy-ins as $3, all the way up to $100 or $1,000 buy-ins. Their main tournament, $25 to enter, $1.5. $5 million to first place. I truly believe that Underdog Fantasy has the best drafting experience in terms of best ball. You can do it on your phone. You can do it on the computer. If you are new to Underdog Fantasy and click on the link in the video description or use promo code Notorious, you will receive a special pick plus up to $250 if you're a first-time depositor. If you have a gambling problem, make sure you call 1-800-GAMBLER. Again, promo code NOTORIOUS, or click on the link in the video description. So Christian Watson is a guy that I am starting to get incredibly enamored with the thought of drafting him. Now, I will note that Christian Watson was a guy that I was given... The ball fondle special, the Suka Lamink 2 last season, and that pick ended up terrible. You are down astronomical if you drafted Christian Watson where he was being drafted. Now, it wasn't because Christian Watson went out there and went from looking pristine to looking like a steaming pile of dog shit, but he also didn't look amazing, I would note, but it's because he was hurt. He missed the first three games of the season with a hamstring strain that he suffered before the season even started. Then he suffered a knee sprain. He had some shoulder soreness and missed no games with those injuries. But then to close out the season, it's like, okay, sure, Watson's suffering these other injuries, but he's playing. And then boom, the fucking hamstring strain rears its ugly head, shows up again, misses the final five games of the season with a hamstring strain. Only nine games played. He was the wide receiver, 68 in PPR, 43 in PPR points per game. A disaster of large magnitude if you drafted Christian Watson. But what I want you guys to do is use the men in black thing that you point up at the screen and it wipes your memory. Use that. Try to forget about last season. Stare into one of those wheels that spins and let your mind just forget about last season. There are some important things to note about last season, but his finish on last season where he basically finished all over you. He gave you the straight Bukake special. It was no bueno if you drafted him, but he was sixth in average depth of target at wide receiver. And in terms of how the targets were given out by Jordan, love me, tender, love me, sweet. When Christian Watts was healthy from weeks five through 13, Watson was number one in targets with 49. Dobbs, 41, Jaden Riley Reed, 39, Luke Musgrave, 29, A.A. Ron Jones, 24, Dontavian Wicks, 23, A.J. Dillon, 20, and Tucker Kraft Mac and Cheese, 13. So when Watson was healthy, he was the number one wide receiver. While I have been banging the table, banging the drums like a drummer boy, shout out Eminem, for Jaden Reed. There is a lot less risk in drafting Watson compared to Reed. Why is that? Because Watson typically goes much later than Jaden Reed. And I'm still going to continue to wax poetically about Jaden Reed, but I'm starting to want to attack Christian Watson more in fantasy drafts. Because the upside is so significant. 
He saw how many touchdowns he scored with Aaron Rodgers in 2022. We saw nine games played, five touchdowns last season. Why is that? Because he led the team in end zone targets. Not just when he was playing, right? Just not weeks five through 13. On the whole season, he led the team in end zone targets with just nine games. Now, Watson recently said that his hamstring is feeling good, that they did the correct things in the offseason to be able to take precaution and not allow the hamstring strain to come back and screw him over. Now, I'm as much of a doctor as Johnny Sins. I make this joke all the time. I'm as much of a doctor as one of the dudes you can watch on the other tube, right? So I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know that Christian Watson is not going to get hurt. I don't know that anyone is going to get hurt or not going to get hurt. I could wake up tomorrow, fucking stub my toe, fall down the stairs, and end up in a coma. Knock on wood, we won't hope that happens, but anything is possible. Shout out to Paul Pierce, I believe. He's the guy who said that. One of the guys on the Celtics did. Or Jason Tatum, I guess. But Christian Watson is a guy that we saw in 2022 have that really good season. 2023, was bugged down with the injury bug, but in 2024, if he's able to stay healthy on a Packers offense that I expect to be landing the 12 to 6 elbow on opponents to be hitting them with the right hand, left hand, Tom Aspinall, 1-2 combo, I think that Christian Watson has huge upside. The same upside that he had in last season when you drafted him significantly Higher, I think his ADP is going to keep on moving up because a lot more people are going to hop on the Christian Watson train. But I already know there's going to be comments. And you probably already commented it before you got to this point. It's like, Nick, Christian Watson really, uh, he really screwed me over last year. I'm not doing it again. I'm not drafting him again. There's going to be a lot of people that think that way. There's a lot of people that get burned by someone one season. And then the next season, they're like, oh, I can't do it again. Right? I feel like I'm going to get filleted up again. Like when you're at hibachi and they're smacking the steak up like this. I wish I could do that. Just cutting things very effectively. OJ Simpson style. But I really do think that Christian Watson will make the doubters incredibly foolish in 2024. I think it is a bounce back season for Mr. Christian Watson. And if you weren't convinced before the video, hopefully all the numbers I brought up convinced you that this is the bounce back year for Watson. And at ADP, he is a great value. So thank you guys all so much for watching today's video. If you didn't have been enjoying, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below while you're down there. Whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure you leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton if you want to follow me on Twitter or X. Please do so at NotoriousFNTSY and check out one of the videos on your screen if you haven't seen them already. Love you guys all so much. Hope you guys have a great rest of your guys' day. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with another banger of a video. Love you guys. As always, stay safe. Good boy.